Hey, what's up, one up fans, one uppers? You know what it is, it's me, Cypher Sounds, one half of the one up family. Uh, well, I guess the family is bigger than just the two of us. One half of one up, I'm the one. Uh, this episode, a classic episode where we interview Sadat X from the legendary group Brand Nubian. Now, here's the thing about this interview we get a lot of Brand Nubian history, we get a lot of um, um, uh, Brand Nubian knowledge. Things, you know, want up gems that you never heard before. But really, we learn how Sadat X still owes me some money. I went on a run with him, and I didn't get my per diem money. So somebody get his accountant on the line or business manager. I need my money. And you're going to enjoy this. Make sure you subscribe. And I don't, you, you know the thing. Subscribe, follow, share. Notifications, all that good stuff, man. And we got more, more. I, I'm about to say it. I hate to say it. We got more content on the way. It's not content. It's just fire. We got a bunch more stuff. Here's to .x. One up is life. Love y'all. Thank you. Boom. Bat original rap. What a treat, Sife. Is it? I think so. I don't know. Why? What do you mean? He owes me per diem. Oh, so yeah, I, I might owe Cypher some per diem money from back then. So from, where does... From Loud. <laughs> is that... what? When did you do stuff for them? Oh, during Sadat's promo? Or Little Kim. Okay. Y'all want the knowledge? Give us the knowledge. Give it to him. I'm going to give you the knowledge. Please do. Before Little Kim, before that call came for Little Kim, the Sadat X call came. And I went on the road with my friend here, Sadat X. Yep. California. Boot camp. Alcoholics. Word. And one more group. Boot camp alcohol exhibit. Exhibit was there. Hell yeah. And was what, what was more. uh was KMD? Was that what, no? No, nah, it was. It was like you know who was there? Like Phil La Agony. Yeah, yeah. Phil was there. I like remember Phil. Like mm -hmm. And this is for that. Wild Cowboys time. This is album time. Yep. Yeah, I guess it was for solo, loud. Yeah. Yep. For loud during Wild loud, Cowboys. Right, yep. And we went on this tour. Like it was like this run in like middle of Cali. And I, I did like two or three shows. And for some reason. Got a call into the room and was told I had to go back home. Why? I don't know. Why'd you fire a site? I, so I didn't do it. I think that was on loud, man. I, I don't, I don't, because I didn't, I was cool with it. You know what I'm saying? It, it was a strange run, though, because it was in the middle of Cali. You know, like, it wasn't L.A. Yeah. And it wasn't, like, the Bay. It was just, like, a middle Random funny middle part. Of... Yeah. No, I got fired in L.A., though. You did? I remember yeah, it was you, LA. you actually do any shows, though? Two. You did two shows. Two. We, I, we stayed at the Mon, the Montrose. Because yep. I still stay there to this day. Mm -hmm. Because every of that. time I walk in the lobby, I'm like, this is where Derek X. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the reason why I say Derek X, because when he checked in, you know, all week it was Sadat, Sadat. But then I saw him checking at the hotel. And he's like, yeah, Derek Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. No question. That's right. I said, oh, they use their real names. So, so where do we start with Sadat, Saif? What do you want to do here? Uh, I'm telling you right now, Brand, I've told this to Pooba. I probably told you too. Brand Nubian is the reason why I am who I am. That's I'll say that up. right now. DJ Wise is premier and like, you know, Pete Rock. But knowledge wise and what got me out of my just being boring and not into anything is Brand Nubian. With the knowledge they were spitting alongside reading the autobiography of Malcolm X is what changed my life at 15, 16 years old. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, Brand Nubian has always had a place. Plus, my mom used to deliver FedEx to uh, Derek X. To Derek oh, Murphy. When he was Derek Murphy. Where does the story start for you, Sadat? Well, the story starts in the Bronx. You know, I'm right in the Bronx Park Avenue, uh, Melrose Houses, Jackson Houses. Then it goes, then it went to New Rochelle. You know what I'm saying? Pops got a little better job, a little more money. You were, were you rapping in the Bronx? Or how yeah, was yeah well, I was when I was in the Bronx, when we moved to New Rochelle, I was about 11. Okay. So, you know, I was seeing it outside. You know, I was seeing main dudes and all, and I was trying to rap, and I got up to New Rochelle, and I thought I was going to be the only one rapping up right. there, and I got up there, and it was other people rhyming. I was like, oh, wow. Um, And so who were the people influencing you hip-hop-wise at that point? Was it just the whole culture being around you? The, the, the culture, but then, you know, I was always... I always been partial like the Grandmaster Cass. Like, I always been partial to the Cold Crush Brothers, and particularly Cass. So I, that's basically... My model, you know what I'm saying? If 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 somebody said they modeled themselves after Sadat X, well, Sadat X modeled himself after Grandmaster Cass. That was always the one that I modeled and I followed the most, and and to this day, I, I always tell him that when I see him. Mm -mm. Um, and so where did it start getting serious for you with rap? I right, well, started getting serious. You know, I got up to New Rochelle, then my pops bought me a little DJ set. 
And you know, then Alamo moved up to North Shore. Cause first of all, Alamo pops and my pops grew up together. Uh, I got baby uh, pictures yeah. with Alamo. Here we you gem know one, gem number one. You no, know, so uh, you know, we, we moved up there. I got a couple of turntables because my pops was tired of me scratching his joint up. And I had my little crew, cause first I was a DJ. I was I was DJ D Rock. Then I was Kid Paradise. Okay. Then I started rhyming. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Alamo well, names was aren't DJ. Horrible. Names <laughs> yeah, aren't yeah. Horrible. Honestly, no. as as far as we always bring up everyone's old names and laugh at them. Those are pretty decent. Yeah that, yeah, that was a little something. Kid Paradise is pretty old school. Yeah, yeah, that was that was old school right there. <laughs> and uh, I started rhyming, man, and, and, and then going through the years. And, like, through Nourish Shell, it's, it's big but not so big, you know. And uh, you knew that the, the, the name around town was Grand Poobah. He was already out with, with Masters of Ceremony. So that was like you wanted to rhyme good to try to impress him. You know, so we were rhyming good, and one day he, you know, he was like, "Yo, I heard you rhyme." Here. He's at the store, so like, yo, exactly. who was at the store? Exactly, run over there and try to try to, you know, be rhyming incognito. But I knew that he was there or something. He was the only one from New Rochelle. It was it was who, him. Uh, who was the other people in Master Ceremony? It was him. It was Doctor Who, and then even before that, Poobah was in a group called the Tray Bag MCs. That was their name, the Tray Bag MCs. Yo, how long has Poobah <laughs> been around? No, yeah, was, I think eighty three. Yeah, he's, he's been years old. Yeah, he's been around for a minute. He's he's been around. And like um, he was producing me and Jamar at one point, like as a as solo acts. Like we go to the studio, Jazzy J, Jazzy J be like, yo, I can give y'all three o'clock in the morning to like nine in the morning right. on a school day. Mm -hmm. So we would go and Pooh Bar do four hours with Jamar, four hours with me, and that went on for a while. Then one day we was in the studio and Jazzy J put on the beat and all of us rhymed on it, and it went from there. Pooh Bar took it downtown. You know, Pooh Bar got the man of a million schemes. So he he went downtown, said he got somebody named Dante, and Dante told us to hold on for a minute. He was at Tommy Boy. He was going somewhere else. And it just basically rolled out like that. It was, it was real quick. What record was it? Brand New Being? Uh, the first joint we did, it was it was something that didn't even come on. I think it was I Ain't Going Out Like That. Oh. That was a joint that, uh, that, 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 that Jay put up there. And then we, we did the album. So um, what about the name Brand New Being? Well, we was uh, you know, at that time, remember it was like it was like that conscious time when everybody was wearing the, yeah. the beads and the medallions. I, I remember one time we had to drive around with Poobah. He wanted this big wooden Martin Luther King head, <laughs> so we had to drive around looking for that thing. But uh, you know, it came from there, like because uh, you know, our, our, our we was Nubian, meaning black, meaning from Africa, and you know, we was just thinking like that was our brand of music. So we just came up with brand Nubian, and that was actually like one of the first names. It wasn't like a whole. Right. Long thing, like one day, I, and, and basically, amazing name. Yeah, really. Jamar good. and Poobah, they thought of it one day. I just came and they was like, "Yo, we brand newbie," and I was like, "All right, then we brand newbie." That sounds pretty good. Y'all hit it on the head. Were you? How old is this? You're this had to be. I was like 19, 19, 18, 19. Yep. And and, and how, I, sorry, I just got to talk five percent a little. Like how much? knowledge were you getting at that time were you like fully in yeah yeah basically i, w I was fully in you know because that was a big movement in nurse shell at one point to god so i was fully in jamar jamar was he's even before me jamar was fully in and pooh i was in his family come from that type of line and uh we basically we, we was from there and like we just tied everything together you know some of the teachings with the music but you was rap you was rapping you loved hip-hop but you was also getting lessons yeah getting lessons and, and see that was at the time when if you didn't know your lessons, yeah. that's when the guards was coming. You might be on the train or somewhere, and they rolled right up on you. What's today's degree, guard? And if you didn't know it, you I mean, you yo, it was times I was in the crib before I went outside. Like, yo, let me study this and at least get today's down in my mind. I right. got to know what today is in case that's somebody the first thing me. that would get asked always if you were to get called for it. Someone well, asked what today Were you is. wearing flags? That's yeah, flags. If you wore or, the you, flag. Oh, yep. That was a that was a main thing. Or the kufi, the, the kufi with the tassel. Yeah. If you seen somebody with that, like if I got on a train and I seen somebody with that kufi on, because you if you wore the kufi, a lot of times that meant that you really knew. You right. know what I'm saying? Those was the ones that would sit there. So if I got on the train and I seen somebody with a kufi, I'd be like, oh, man, this is getting ready to get real. And if they see me and they knew that I was like that, they'd come over to you. But you know, it just it just forced you, you know, to to learn. And now, how, how, somebody stepped to me and I was in a club, young, 18. And I had a flag, two flags on, and this kid came in the bathroom. He was like, you know, what, what, why are you wearing that? I was like, you know, I'm a five percenter. He's like, what's this? What's that? What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, and they know. Yeah. And he ripped the flags off my, off my chest. <laughs> yeah, that was it. They'll take like, it. I was like, what, what, what are you doing? He's like, you don't know the knowledge. I said, I, I'm new. <laughs> I'm new. He's like, well, you can't wear the flag yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they would, oh. they would, they would do he's that. Like, I should fuck you up. Yeah, they would he's do. Like, it. How new? I'm like, three months. Well, that, he's like, you can't wear this. He's like, I should fuck you up, but I see that you at least trying to talk to me about it. Mm -hmm. 
I was like, what is this? And then that guy went on to be your father figure. <laughs> Tracy was, Morgan. It was Tracy. That was, that was Tracy. Tracy. That's our dad, Tracy. I, okay. Get well, Tracy. Um, well, hold on, real quick. So during this time, how righteous are you living? Like, are y'all actually righteous all the time? Yeah, back, especially back then. You know, because back then it was like when you first get you know, it. and because because well, when you first get it, it's like. You know, it, it, it's consuming, you know what I'm saying? So you trying to live out the full tenant of everything. So you trying to do everything straight, rigid down the line. So, I mean, we was living, like, I was in the house preaching to my parents, like, this is not going to be served here, no pork, and I'm not eating out of this pan no more, and this and that. So it was, it was pretty serious. Did you ever yell at your mom, Jesus is black? And your mom starts laughing at you and then put a pork chop in your face. Oh, all the time. Say, I'm not eating this. And then your mom was like, well, then don't eat. Yep, my pops all the time be in the kitchen cooking pork chops. He'd be like, yo, this smell good, man. You sure? <laughs> my grandmother would be like, you was raised on this. You know, you, you ate it when you was a baby. <laughs> I was like, oh, gosh, here we go. <sighs> so um, you guys start right, right away, start working on the album. How did it work out? Or did well, you put out a single first? We we, we we did that song in Jay's. Then we did a song called Feel So Good. Of course. We put that out. This is all pre-deal? This is well. This was around. Dante said the whole. Yeah, life. like somehow Dante and Pooba had worked out a little something where. Uh, oh, interesting. You know what I'm saying? They, them two was always in cahoots. Probably a money deal. You know Dante's always staying in. So him and Pooba worked something out, and then all of a sudden I just remember we did the song, and they called me and was like, "Yo, we doing a video." So we did the video, and then um a little while after that we was working on the album. You know Dante was like, "Yo, y'all gotta hurry up, get the album done, this and that." So we just went to the studio and started knocking it out. Wow. Is, is it a contradiction of terms if you're super 5% or hardcore? Like, aren't white people sort of part of, um, uh, wait, hold on, Saif, I always get confused. 85, Dumb, Deaf, and Blind. Mm -hmm. um, the 10, aren't they the bad, Wicked 10? What, 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 what blood suckers of the poor. Yeah, like, supposedly. Not all white people, just, yeah. just the 10%. Just the 10%. There the, are 85. The 10% mm -hmm. is basically supposed to be like, like preachers and, and people that know the truth but are shielding the truth. That's like the 10%. Then the 85% is, is basically the population, the masses. You know, then it's supposed to be 5%, which is us, the poor righteous teachers of the planet Earth. You know, so so we're the 5%. But like like I said, man, like as you go, like a lot of, I'm, I'm still 5%, but a lot of the lessons and stuff, and, and this is where I get into debate with a lot of the guards. I mean, those lessons, a lot of those was written in 1964. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if we know and understand that we gone and we supposed to be advancing, we got to know and understand that some of them lessons are not today's today's facts. And that's the advance. <laughs> you know, times have changed. If we know that the total population of the original nation, is it was this back then, it's got to be more now. Or, or different facts have come out. You know what I'm saying? Landmass facts and stuff like that. Different facts have come that are proven that that's a little different now. As far it's good as far as mind repetition and I guess getting yourself mentally that's what I'm to saying. learn the knowledge, stuff. The knowledge still shapes your yeah. your everyday thought process. Yeah, definitely. That's how that's how definitely. it is with me. Mm -hmm. Like it made yeah. me it, it made me love to learn. Yeah, definitely. Then, and 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 it's, it's surprisingly, <laughs> it's made me the, the lessons made me learn to to judge people. Differently, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times they say like, if you five percent, you're supposed to hate white people. Well, the the lessons have taught me that, you know, um, the the worst devils sometimes are the ones that come in the same color as you. You know what I'm saying? I just learned, and then from going on the road and and growing just to to deal with people, you know that that that's I've been messing with Ra the rugged man since '90. You know what I'm saying? That's my man. I don't look at him as white Ra or nothing like that. That's just my man. I got people in Europe in different places. Every year we go back and forth. So it's taught me a lot, too, to, to deal everybody on their own merit. Now, real quick, we should also mention while Sadat's here, um, he has a wine. This yes. Is, I mean, this is not the product I would have assumed one day I'd be getting <laughs> yeah, from Sadat. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right? Uh, mm -hmm. um, True Wine Connoisseurs. Definite. Has the picture of Sadat on it. Yes. And I just want to say real quick, as someone who has, in the last couple of weeks, been held to the fire by many so-called hip-hop supporters who I don't believe do anything to support hip hop but just talk a lot of trash about it. I'm not talking about Chuck D by the way, I'm talking about people online. Yeah, yeah, no Obviously problem. I, 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 I see that too. I know you've been going through it. I see So it. <laughs> when y'all all say, oh I support blah blah blah, well we're sitting right here with yeah. a legend who has a new business that he's out here doing. Yes. And if you drink wine, why not check out what Sadad's doing? It's available in Please 55 do. stores yes. in New York. And you said it's going to other places as it's well. It's going to other places. We finally got it down to the district. Shout out to all my family. Got extensive family in Washington. Boom, that's so, where I'm from. Oh, yeah. Like Barry Farm. Shout out Anacostia uh, Baloo. I was there last you week. You know, the Black Hole, Chuck O'Pleasure, all those groups like that, Chuck. Whoa. You know, so 
I was there. Really? Understand? But right. uh, it's gonna be there too. So, anyways, yeah. is there a place online people can find this too? Yeah. Well, oh, you can hit me uh online at uh you know hit my my email brand new seven b r a n d n u number seven at gmail. We we working on the website right now and. But right now it's just in stores. Yeah, it's in store fifty five stores. And if you get a chance, just Google Sadat X Wine and you'll see all the True Wine episodes that we have that led up to the culmination of this. This is very cool. All right, I love that. So you you're you're working on the first album now. Yeah. Did you, so, did you guys have an actual meeting and like sign a contract and like we're signing to Electra Records now? Did Pooba just do it himself and be like, y'all are gonna be good? Well, what happened was like I said, one day I got a call. Pooba was like, yo, uh, him and Dante, they worked something out. Yo, we, we, we signing with Electra. We 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 got Larry Lytle was the lawyer. La Larry had to be about eighty then, mm -hmm. so he's probably bones now. But uh, mm -hmm. he was we we got that and I remember it. The advance from Electra was fifteen thousand dollars. I got five thousand. Poobah got five. Jamal got five, and that was the most money I had ever seen. I immediately went out and bought some gold teeth and some Timberlands. I'll never forget that money well spent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some gold teeth and Timberlands, but it came from then. Then we just had to work on the album, you know. And uh, that was your personal money. Personal money, five thousand dollars budget. For that yeah, album. Now, <laughs> that's a good question. Oh, because, you know, I don't know what the budget was. I know that we ran up a car service because somehow, remember back in the days they used to have the car service and you get the PIN number. The yeah. Car, yeah. We ran up about $28,000 worth of uh, worth of services from Electra, which was taken out. And then, because, you know, back then you, you'd get them big contracts, but they'd get all that shit back. You know, right. probably, you know what I mean? Because they get all that money back. You do a video, yeah. you, you it costs 50000 whatever. They take fifty thousand back. Right, where right. at the end, I remember we wound up owing Electric some money. Um, so, do, so right away, do you already have like an idea of what this album is gonna feel like, or is it just cutting records? Yo, we we just was 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 doing it. You know what I'm saying? We 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 come to the studio, literally come to the studio with a record, play records, loop something up. Who would bring the records in? All of you? all of us. All of us. some days I bring some. Some days Poobah would bring some. Are there some any you hold to that you're like I brought that what sample? Bring? I bought. The Edie Brickell record for Slow Down. I seen, I saw it was one of those late night shows, and I saw her video, and I was like, yo, I gotta go get that record. The next day I went and got it, it was a 45 too. And we tried to loop it up, and it didn't work at first. Right. So we, we was like, forget about it. The last day we had to do the album, the very last day, we had about two hours left. And when they, we was playing with the record again, somehow we looped it up right this time and laid that down. That was the last joint we did. That was the last one for the album? For the album. And and, and, and it's bugged out because imagine if we wouldn't have put that on the album. It would have still been a cool album, I think. But that, yeah, you know, right. that was like the main, like a main joint we needed. And it came together like that. Um, And what was the clearing process for that record? Like, did uh, she hear the record? Because that was a huge yeah. smash. And it was one of the couple times in that era in which was a smash so was sampled, just like sometimes yeah. or I'm slow. Mm -hmm. It was something was sampled really recently. Yeah, right at the time. So that how it did it go? Out. Well, she heard it. And like we we had to explain what it was talking about because you know she, because she didn't know she you know, know what jumps were yeah she didn't know so we had to explain that this is basically an anti crack record it's not promoting crack it's anti crack we we are not talking about violence and she went with it like when Pooba used sunshine for Royers I think Roy wanted like three thousand dollars in an in an organ or something like that so that's what we gave him you know some wow. different stuff like that wow but it's really cool that you I got to be honest too. I haven't gotten that 45 yet, and it's much, I'm not, it's not rare, but it's much more rare than you would think. Right. It's one of those records yeah. that every time I walk into a store, I see Edie Brickell, all of her artwork looks the same. You know, it's yep. all that yeah. like cartoony, mm -hmm. all of the same. And it's never that record. Right. It's yep. always some crap that I've never heard of. Mm -hmm. Now, by the way, Edie Brickell, as, as you well know, uh, went on to marry Paul Simon yeah. right after that. And then recently... They hadn't gotten to a scrap. They, they were had scrapping. A scrap. <laughs> Paul, they both got arrested. Word. Did you oh, hear that? I heard Serious. Paul Simon and his wife. I didn't know it was her. Yeah, yeah. they're still married. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm like, how did that happen? Like, You don't have your first flare-up <laughs> yeah. when you're sev exactly. Paul's 72 Word. years old. Word. She's now like 40-something. Paul was going for it that day. He was like, yo, I'm not going for that today. <laughs> I want to hear it. She's like, I'm it. tired of your bullshit <laughs> songwriting. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs>